Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So glad that you're here today and welcome if you are new. Today I wanted to share with you a small little Dollar Tree craft haul that I recently went on and a few little projects that I thought would be really nice to share. So let's go ahead and just hop right on down to this craft table and get started. But just know that I will link the designs that I used today in the um, description. So make sure you check out the description for all materials, supplies, and links that are used with today's projects. This project I wanted to share with you is something that I found, um, actually I found this near the checkout. Um, I just saw it and thought, wow, that is super cute. It's just a little, it's like a little ring dish or a little candy dish. And it's um, red, pink, turquoise, yellow, orange, and deep orange. And it's just a little rainbow trinket tray. And I thought it would be really cute to just put a little sweet design on there. So... I am, this is a great scrap buster. When you find little trays like this, these little ring trays, trinket trays, whatever you want to call them, they are great scrap busters. So I just, I have this, is, this is actually like a velvet, um, it really is just like a velvet bulletin board, and I use it as a mouse pad for my Mac, but I thought I would bring it in right now so that I don't have glass clinking on glass. To me, that is just, oh, I cannot, can't handle glass clinking on glass. So, anyway, I just made a sweet little um, design in, well, I found it actually. I didn't make it. Um, it just says good vibes. And I'm just going to put that front and center. Now, this particular design did have a rainbow above it and I just um, hid that particular uh, part of the image and I just cut out the good vibes and this is just white everyday vinyl. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of transfer tape and we're going to burnish down the front really well and the back. Just like that and bring this back over and perfect nice then I'm just going to basically center this um, you could totally do a script or you could do the block letters I chose the block letters I I thought that I liked that the most. And just put that down. Burnish that down really well. And like I said, I found this up by the checkout area. So, you know, it may or may not be something that is at every Dollar Tree. But... I thought that was super cute. So it just says good vibes, little tray to give to a teen or keep on your desk. I could use these for like little embellishments when I'm doing my cards. There's a whole world of possibilities for this little tray. Okay, so that is craft number one. Craft number two is um, something that I think is and again, another scrap buster, but what I did is I purchased two of these little notepads. So one is 100 sheets, one is 75. This is assorted colors. This is white. They do not have any lines on the paper pads. And so something that I do is I actually do make my own paper pads like this where they are um, just tear away paper pads and they have craft board on the back and a little cover. So um, I've done that for um, game scoring pads. I've done some teacher notepads 
and I will link a, I will actually link a video that I made with these pads um, that I made myself. These I purchased, so these are from the Dollar Tree. And again, I have some more scraps, but more importantly, I have some patterned vinyl. Now, th these particular patterns, this one I really liked, I've enjoyed this one, and this one came in like a stash box, and I haven't really found a use for it yet. I do like it, it is definitely not something that I would normally choose for myself, but it is very whimsical and fun and you know it just for a throw down notepad this is really cute so what i thought i would do is use up some of my patterned vinyl so this is a great scrap buster pattern vinyl buster and i'm just going to sit here i've already cut this out on the um, machine so i'm just going to weed this particular thing and the notepads are four by six so I made this a little bit longer than six inches so that it would wrap around the top like this. And so I'm basically going to set, I'm going to set this here in the corner, get it lined up really well. And then I'm just going to fold it over the back. And then I have, um, I have some, like a label for the front. So that is what this particular project is. And I am going to kind of treat this a little like transfer sheets when I have a really long piece of transfer tape. I only pull off a piece of the carrier sheet like this. And so I'm going to line this up, making sure that I got both of my corners. And I want to do this before I press it all down. I think that's good. Okay, and then I'm just going to pull off this carrier sheet and I'm going to just press firmly with my hand on the front, just like this. Okay, and then when I get to the top, before I, oh, there, there's the air conditioner. So, sorry if that is a little loud. It is very hot, as I'm sure it is very hot where you are. And we just are not, we really need the air conditioner for a little bit. Okay, so I just used my little burnisher tool to make sure that the front was nice and smooth. So this is the front. And then I'm going to just very carefully wrap this around the back, just like so. Okay. And I think I have, I need to get my true control knife because I have a tiny little edge right here and I need to pop off. Let me grab that really fast. And I go along, it is, Pretty microscopic but I definitely just want to make sure it is nice these would make great gifts teachers teens your Bible study group or ladies group um, secretaries nurses like you, I could just go on and on these would be great stocking stuffers so this is going to be my notepad and I don't know that anybody would know that the front isn't already like that. So you can definitely personalize this with as you know whatever pattern paper you have. Next thing that I have, and I'm gonna trim off that excess, is I have a thing for the front and it just says notes. So, you know, nothing crazy. I'm going to leave the bubble and we're just going to weed out the letters themselves instead of normally we leave the letters and weed everything else. There we go. I have more trouble with ease 
and the middles of the E's. Okay, just pop that right back into place. And then our S will come up. Great. Okay, so I wanted to have this on top of here, but you can see that the minute I put this down on here, this pattern will show through and you might lose the word notes. So what I did is I created just a white, I just have a white oval. It's a little bit smaller, but what I thought I would do would be to have that underneath this so that the white shows through. Let me grab, yep, that will work. I have like a mountain of scrap transfer tape, hoping to use that up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this layer here. I love projects that allow you to use up all kinds of scraps because I don't know about you, but I have so many scraps, it is not even funny. Like I sometimes sit around and think of, well, what kind of projects could I make that will allow these scraps to get used up? I'll put that over there. Okay, so this is just a white oval and I only have to really get rid of some edging here. And this is gonna go behind. So I'm just gonna have this here. I don't know that you can see. It's just a tiny little white oval. And I'm just going to stick this So what I did in Design Space is I duplicated the peach colored oval, but I removed the lettering. And that way I would have a second layer that made for quick and easy work. And now, okay, so we've got our oval back there. Looks like I need to trim. I got this a little cattywampus, so let me trim this piece off really fast. Perfect, got that. And then this will just go on top of here. So we could put it in the corner, we could put it in the middle. Um, I think I'm going to put it, let's see, nope, I think right here is probably really good, about right there, and I'm just kind of going edge to edge, making sure that it is fairly even. So as I'm doing this with you here, my mind is just going 90 to nothing about all of the possibilities that you could make with these little notepads. All right, so here is this one. Love it. And I like how the notes actually, you can see it and it doesn't get lost in the design. A little clip there. Okay, and then we have this pink one here. We have a white layer just like before and now this one is gold and I thought that this particular vinyl which I like I just don't use it very often but I thought that it complemented the centers of these daisies like that and so I'm gonna go ahead and weed out these letters we have all of this so the question is do we remove the O actually that doesn't look too bad okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing that I did before is that yeah I think that'll fit 
I'm going to do the same thing I did before, and I'm just going to put the gold layer on top of the white layer, and then we'll put um, the daisies on top of the notepad, and then we'll put this down on top of that, just like on the previous one. So my husband and I, the other day, when we, when we went to the Dollar Tree, um, we used to always go out early in the mornings and do our errands and shopping, etc. And okay, so this is going to be ready to go. I'm going to leave that over there. And we actually haven't done that in quite a while, so it was really nice. We got up early and we we went to the grocery store and the garden place and the pharmacy and all that good stuff and popped into Dollar Tree just to see and oh, y'all I found so many things like it was nice I didn't have a kid following me around asking for all kinds of things my husband is really sweet about just literally I can go aisle by aisle by aisle and take my time and look around so it was really fun. We had a great time. It was like a good, you know, Saturday morning date. It was fun. So, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't even know that they carried. And I mean, I know their inventory changes constantly, but there were things, there were staples of things that I was like, oh, I didn't know they carried stuff like that. Okay. I think I'm just slightly off over there, but I'm not going to worry too much with that. And again, I'm just going to wrap this around. Okay. That looks so cute. I love that. Even with that little part right there. This is great. All right, let's get this label on here. Okay. Let's burnish that down very well and pull up this transfer tape. All right. Okay, so this is craft number two, and I've got a, like a gold pen. I may go in and just put like a small little something kind of like that. I have no idea. This was nowhere when I pulled this off my map. But anyway, that you get the idea that you can take plain notepads like this from the Dollar Tree. So for a dollar, you've got a nice, um, Thing to put in a gift bag. You could put pair these with um, tea or bookmark stickers. These be great stocking stuffers. Anyway, lots of ways to use these. Okay, that's craft number two. Okay, moving on to craft number three. This is a wood frame with a tin board. That sorry about the glare. Let me just go ahead and open that. Okay, and this, I think, I'm pretty sure that this is magnetic. So my thought, I got these little, mag they call them magnetic buttons. These were in the craft section. Okay, so nice. Right, little, and there's actually, wow, there's actually a whole bunch of these. So, here I, I guess maybe I should pay attention. This says 14 pieces. I just counted seven circles. So you do get 14 of those. And this is going to be kind of like a little menu board. Now, if you purchase this, you do need to put some sort of hanger on the back or just lean it up against something um, on your counter. 
Okay, and then let's see, I'm going to turn this around. It looks like, yeah, okay, so this is going to be here at the top. It says this week, and then over um, here I have the days of the week. Now, when I went to make this design, I literally had to piece together all of my black scraps. So I have to giggle and tell you what I did. So this particular design here, I had to tape together two scraps so that I could make sure that the design um, stayed together. And then here, I didn't have one long um, cohesive blank, uh, I mean, scrap of black. So what I did is I did the same thing as I pieced together three so that I could go ahead and in design space, these are already spaced out, you know, ready to go. And I made sure when I went to the cutting mat, you know, how you can move them around a little bit. So I just manipulated them slightly, but this allow this will allow me to lay all of these down together and I won't have to try and, and hope that I get them lined up correctly. All right, so if you ever have some scraps that you don't have enough of, but you have like you have pieces, then I would say just piece them together. And actually, this is a really substantial piece there. Those little, little crafts with little, you know, making sentiments and stuff, those little scraps come in handy. But, okay, so... We got all of this, all right, so it says this week, and we're just going to weed out these middles. So everything is weeded out and I think that's very interesting that on all these letters that is the one S that is absolutely on its own. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I think that will suffice. And we'll do that one there. Okay. Question of the day. What do you do with your scraps? Do you use scraps? Do you keep them? How small is too small? Like how small is too small? You know, I never really, you know, for instance, this here, like, that's pretty small, right? It is five inches long, roughly, and about half an inch wide. But my mind says that I could totally make a sentiment for a card or to go along, you know, let's say I was doing a pencil or something. So that's kind of where my mind goes with scraps. And you could layer pieces. You know, these definitely would come off of something like that. But what kind of projects are your favorite to use with scrap pieces of vinyl? I'm going to bring this in. Okay. I'll line this up again. Actually, I think what I'm going to do... I know this sounds weird. I'm going to line it up this way. This will allow me to 
this C without really getting my head in the way. Okay, so that's an inch and a quarter. Oh my goodness. The children are playing video games once again. Sorry if you can hear the outburst. And we'll just get this down. Okay, so there's that piece. I am so glad that I pieced these together so that I could lay these all down at one time. And it's a good use of washi tape, like if you have a washi tape that you don't particularly like, you can use it for things like this. There we go. Okay. And if you do purchase this, just so you know, this magnetic tin sheet is really just put on top of a piece of cardboard and this is not necessarily wood, so I mean this is a, a delicate thing. Um, don't press really hard on it, but this would be great for a menu, well a menu, but this would be great for a classroom as well. Maybe I'll go back and see if they have more. Because I could put a tutoring schedule up. That's usually the big question is what days are you available? Okay. So there we go. Alright, this is craft number three. And then you can just place these here, put a little like a tiny little um pieces of paper or what have you with your meals of the week. Maybe have the kids help you make little strips of paper and you draw, I don't know, making this up on the fly. <laughs> your family's favorite meals, put them in a jar, draw little slips, put them on here, let the kids rearrange them. But there we go. I think this is great. Okay, so this is craft number three. For our next craft, I'm going to do a, uh, an iron-on project. And so I brought in my Easy Press Mini. And I basically want to try out the foil iron-on sheet from Dollar Tree and the glitter iron-on. Now, I'm pretty sure that at some point I have used a glitter iron-on from Dollar Tree I'm not 100% sure, but I have never used the foil and I wanted to try that out and see, you know, if it was decent. Um, I like to use the Dollar Tree uh, vinyls for my classroom, for labeling stuff. Um, it's just a little more cost effective. And then I save my premium vinyls for things like projects and crafts and gifts and, and all of that. So we're going to be trying these out and um, I'm going to be making some tags. So what I have here is I have, I pulled three out. These are just chalkboard tags and I got these in the craft section. Okay, so I'm going to set those aside as well. And I have my pressing mat. Now, Something that I wanted to share with you that I have recently started doing, and mainly because I don't know about you, but when I work with a glitter iron-on, regardless of brand, I sometimes have a really hard time finding where my design is. So what I've started doing is I just kind of, now I don't want to say fold, but I, I go around the what I think is the design and I just kind of fold back and so I find where my design is because you can see so see you can see the cut line and then I just kind of press down a little bit and then what I do is I 
once I find that edge, so like right here is this edge, then I just move a little bit away and I just cut off any excess and that I find helps me with my weeding. So same thing with this one. Okay, and so I just find the edge of my design, fold back some of the siding and cut off my excess. Now this foil here, this is pretty thick feeling. I've I've never used their foil. This is really substantial. Um, I'm a little bit excited about this because, trim that off, if this works on a paper tag, then imagine what you could do. You could add foil accents to your cards just by having your Cricut cut some things out and then using your iron or your uh, mini press to put it onto cardstock, etc. So this right here might be a total game changer. So, all right, let's get these weeded and then get them on to these tags. And then something else that I did purchase um, at Dollar Tree, I found it and I wanted to try it out and I tried it the other day and it worked really well it's called copper oven liner now to me this looks like a teflon sheet that i have bought at a kitchen supply store for quite a bit of money <laughs> and this was you know a dollar 25 and it's just one of those oven liners that withstands heat up to 500 and so i it comes in one big sheet so i cut down a 12 by 12 sheet for my big projects and then I'm gonna have um, I have this this smaller piece here I just cut it into smaller pieces for my smaller projects so this is just a little protective sheet and I think it does a great job so I wanted to pass that tip on to you as well this particular design is just a snowflake I say just a snowflake I love snowflakes I absolutely love winter and the snow um wish i skied more but there's a variety of factors as to why i haven't been skiing in a while but anyway this um this is my snowflake this is really pretty silver glitter like look at that that's just gorgeous and so I wanted to put that here on this round one. So I'm going to lay that there and just stick that in there. Okay. So I'm just going to line that up. Does that look like it's centered? Yep, I think. I think that looks like it's centered. Okay, move these off to the side. Okay, so um, I'm gonna be using low, so that's just one little line. And I'm just going to press this down, firm pressure. And I'm just gonna go about, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, and then I want to pull up the sheet, and then I'm going to put the Teflon sheet and then just repress one more time. And that paper is very hot. Okay, let's see how that Look at that. That is absolutely stunning. Now that I look at it, I don't know that I lined it up as well as I thought I had. Do I even need to press that down anymore? I don't know that I do. Maybe I'll just do like five seconds. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit off to the side and cool down, and we're gonna go on to the next one. The next tag is the 
more block one and this particular design is a reindeer silhouette so again i just found all of these things in design space and when you open the file there are quite a few things that you can hide like if you're going to use pre-made tags then this design in design space is on top of a tag but you'll so you'll just need to hide the tag and not cut that out if you need to cut it out it is there for you okay but i just thought that was that was really fun and then this so this glitter is very um smooth i don't want to say it's a shimmer i mean it's a glitter but this gray or this silver glitter feels a little more um rough but it's not rough it's just a, it just feels more than this maybe it's me maybe it's the same and i just don't know what i'm talking about but this i'm going to just put this little guy right here Whoop. stuck to my fingers there oh and you could totally like put a little um you could put the names at the top like you could seriously get creative with these tags you could even use the glitter to put a to and a from you could use it to put the names um lots of possibilities with the ta these tags so they are a great thing to pick up when you see them Cool for a second. Pull this sheet up. And these tags seem to do very well. Like the, the black um, paper, these are, you know, substantial card stock. I call them chalkboard, but they're the very heavy card stock. So they're not coming up on this transfer paper it's not pulling it up which is really nice we have those two all right now for the fun one and this is the one i really 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 wanted to do so this is the foil and i've never used the foil before i don't even know if it leads out Oh yeah, it does. Okay, so this weaves just like iron-on. And maybe I'll have to figure out if I cut this right or I didn't use enough pressure. Because this one, now that it cut through, okay, I think I'm going to have to recut this one here because it's definitely scored on this side, but when I go to weed this, it definitely does not want to come up. So I don't know, maybe I didn't have enough pressure, maybe I'm doing something incorrect. I don't know. Let me give this a try and I will be right back. Okay, I am back with a new piece of the foil. I'm going to put it right there. It actually is really, really pretty. I will tell you that I had to use more pressure, not default pressure. So when I, I put this one, this is the original, it didn't want to weed, I put it back on my mat, I ran it again, and then I noticed that it was working. So I'm going to try and use this for something else, but what I did is I grabbed another sheet of the foil and I put it down and I just re-ran the whole thing and weeded it out. And so in these little intricate pieces, right? Well, this actually did okay, but like down here in these intricate parts, that 
that was a little harder to weed out. But overall, these, um, it's really thick, so definitely use default pressure if you're going to use it. So let's go ahead and just get it on to our design. And I actually need to trim off this little piece because, well, I need to trim off a piece of it because of that hole right there. So let me, let me do a little bit of surgery here. And that way I don't have to totally lose that particular piece and I apologize for the uh, laughter and giggles in the background we've got some very happy teenagers okay so all right here we go and again, I just have it on low. The, um, the boxes don't talk about like low, medium, high. It talks about uh, using an iron and just using the cotton linen setting. And so since this is my first time using the foil, I just thought that I would um, use the low setting. And then let's see, it's pretty warm. Gonna set that aside. Gonna cap that before I cut my finger. I'm really hoping this works nice. I, I have one more little project that I would like to use this foil on. And I think it would be, okay, so needs a little bit more heat okay we'll let that sit for a minute I definitely could see the benefit of this foil like if you were to cut it into strips or maybe just large shapes um, or pieces you could then put it down on your cardstock um, to foil your cardstock a little bit I don't know I don't know if I would want to do a bunch of intricate designs because all right so here's what i notice some of the blue definitely so some of it doesn't want to stay down here now this is still pretty and but i noticed that some of it definitely stayed on the carrier sheet i think i'll do one more little experiment with the foil before i decide whether or not it is something that i would use again but i mean this is nice in and of itself so i would say this is an okay result not great not not bad these are excellent so the glitter iron on on the cardstock tags is perfect this is great i'm going to recreate for our last project of the day i'm going to recreate something that i did on my maker previously so this is faux leather and on the back side here is this is glitter iron on and what i did is i um i ironed the glitter iron on onto the faux leather just like this and then I had my maker cut this out um, and I used the genuine leather setting and I used my deep point blade 
Now, I will link a video up here in the corner for you because I did do this a different way because I wanted to see if it would work before I tried it out on my Joy. And what I did for the second bookmark is I cut out the two pieces separately with the maker and then I ironed on after the fact, okay? And it worked fine. So I wanted to try the same thing with the Joy. So here's what I noticed about the Joy. You can cut faux leather with your Joy and the little standard blade that comes with your Joy. You, um, you only have one option. It is faux leather paper thin and you can do more pressure. So I cut this particular piece of faux leather out using more pressure, faux leather, paper thin. I then did glitter cardstock. So you can see this here. I'm gonna weed this particular cardstock and I'm going to iron it onto here in just a moment. Now the next part of the project what I wanted to do was re see if I could recreate this with my joy. So what I mean by that is I have another piece of faux leather paper thin that I would use more pressure. I do have a strong grip mat for my joy. I didn't have one for my maker and the standard grip mat worked fine and I just used a little bit of painter's tape to make sure that the faux leather did not move. But it works great here. This is the foil. This is what I was wanting to try out again. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to press the faux leather onto the foil or the foil onto the faux leather, however you want to view it. And then I'm going to put this into the joy and I'm going to use more pressure and I'm probably going to run it twice. And I wanna see if I can do it that way with the Joy as well, just like I did with my Maker. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, which is okay, then you would just need to do it separately and then iron them together like I'm about to show you now. So here's, if you do them separately, Okay, I've got the faux leather. It's kind of got like a micro suede feel on the back, or I guess, I don't know, micro suede or a felt. And then this glitter iron on, I'm just going to get this border off of here. And this is um, not, let's see. This is just, this is not foil. This is just regular, um, glitter iron on and this is the Dollar Tree version it's actually it's this pink version right here okay and I decided that I wanted to make a my grandmother is an avid reader like really an avid reader and I just wanted to make sure that she had a pretty bookmark so I'm going to give her a choice of the bookmarks that she can choose from. Okay, I'm going to need to pull out that little circle. I'm, I don't have the tassels yet, so I'm just leaving the circle for them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this pink bookmark with the white faux leather. Okay. And I'm going to do a cursory press so that when I flip it over, it doesn't move. So I'm just going to heat this up just ever so slightly, just so that it starts to adhere to each other. And then I'm actually going to turn it over and press it the way you normally do. You just want to kind of start activating that adhesive. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over. And here we go. This again, I'm on low 
heat with the press. I'm using firm pressure. And we're going to see if the Dollar Tree glitter iron-on will play nice with the faux leather. I have high hopes. It did play nice with the cardstock. Okay, turn this around. That is very warm. I tell you, I really do like this Teflon sheet because when I work with glitter, I don't like to have my mat um, just kind of open. I like to be able to protect it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to let that sit here for a minute and cool off, and then we will reveal that. Okay, so now the big test is to line this up. Hopefully I can remember how I had it. Okay, I'm going to bring in a bigger piece of this here. Okay. So I'm just covering the foil. So this is the foil that I'm going to adhere to this. And I'm going to just see if I can get this on here. And then I'm going to cut this out. And I really do think that I'm going to have to do more pressure. And I'm just going to have to run it twice. Um, I don't know that one pass will be enough but I wanted to see if it would work on my joy because I do know that not everybody has a maker or an explore machine. And I like to do projects on both of my machines so that I can let you know what works and what doesn't. Okay. All right. I'm going to, Ooh, that is hot. I'm going to flip that over and Just give it a few more seconds. Just like this. Okay, now I am going to let this cool because I have to cut this on my machine. So I'm going to just set this aside for just a moment. All right, so let's see how our bookmark did here and see if we need to press anything. I tell you, this Dollar Tree carrier sheet is very sticky. Okay, so I will, I think this worked really, really well, just like the other one. I am going to go along the edge um, with my True Control knife. The, the thing about ironing it on after the fact is no matter how close I get it lined up, I always have like a little bit of an extra. And so really, you know, it's better if you can adhere them first, but in a pinch, if you only have a certain type of machine and you have to, it just, you just trim off this excess and then it's, you know, it's just as if you had fused it all the way around and then cut. Okay, so this will clean up nicely. I don't know if you can tell. So 
that's what I'll do is I'll just go along the edge here and clean that up. All right. And then I'm going to set this aside for right now. Let's go ahead and cut the other one and see what results we get. Okay, so before I show you in Design Space um, some of the features about cutting this faux leather, I just wanted to show you how I have it on the mat. So I have the strong grip mat. I have the faux leather side face down on the sticky part of the mat. And I do do that even without a foil overlay or a glitter overlay. I always place my foil, my faux leather with the faux leather side down on the cutting mat. But I went ahead and I put a little bit of washi, especially up at the top and the bottom. I just don't want this to move at all. And so this is now ready to go into the machine. Let's go to design space so I can just show you a little bit of what you can expect when you're using your Joy instead of the Maker or the Explore Series machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Make. Again, I'm using my Joy this time, whereas last um, on the last video I used my Maker. Um, you really should always mirror your design when you're using any kind of um, iron-on or foil. And then with the faux leather getting placed face down on the mat, I also do iron on. It just kind of keeps it all straight in my mind with those types of materials. And then I have this here up in that top left-hand corner. I've already got it on my mat. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Okay, now that we are connected to the joy, I'm going to go to Browse All Materials, and I'm just going to type in leather. Okay, so once that comes up, you can bookmark it or not bookmark it, but it says faux leather paper thin, and this is the only leather option for the Joy. But that's good because you can just use your Joy and the blade that comes with that machine. So I'm going to click on faux leather, and then I'm going to go ahead and click more pressure. And I think that this is really important that you have more pressure because I am doing the faux leather, but I now have the foil on top of that. And basically, I just want to see if the joy will cut through all of that or not. So I'm going to do more pressure and then I'm probably going to run it so when it is finished. Um, when it is finished, I will not remove the mat. I'll just go ahead and click on the go again and let the machine run it one more time. Okay, now we're going to see what happens. ran this twice and um, definitely once is not enough so I have to run it twice but the joy is not like the maker and explorer you can't just automatically hit go again and then it you know goes right away um, it does make you unload your mat <laughs> then you have to reload the mat and hit go again so um, here's what I would probably say if you want to do a faux leather project on the Joy, then I probably would not, um, I don't know if I would necessarily um, do the iron-on or the foiling first. So you can see where like some of it's coming apart. It's um, it's like it didn't cut all the way through. It cut all the way through the foil, but not all the way through the leather. So you would have to then take 
your knife and just run it down and you know you're just basically getting the probably the microscopic level of the bookmark finished cutting but because the machine did not do so however ironing first you'll notice that I don't have to do any trimming around the edge like it's it's good so um, that's my actually this little notch right here this little hole this this did perfect so I don't know maybe it's me maybe it is user error so anyway back to this so this is a 2 by 8 and I cut the faux leather and the glitter iron on separate and I pressed them after the fact this works just fine not a problem okay and then this one I wanted to try that foil out just look y'all that looks so professional I mean, really, it does, even with all my drama with the foil this evening. But I think that's great. Um, so now I can let her choose whether she wants a pink glitter or a blue foil, and whether she wants a bigger one or a smaller one. So this turned out really well. Let me go ahead and grab all of the projects so we can take a look at everything we've done this evening and then choose the one that we like the best. Here is a recap of everything that we did this evening. So craft number one was this cute little rainbow trinket tray. And yep, that's what they call it. And then we just put some white adhesive vinyl on there saying good vibes. All right, love it, so cute. And then the second one were these notepads. So again, one is colored, one is all white, none of them have lines. One is 75 sheets, one is 100 sheets. But essentially, I just covered the front of these notepads with patterned vinyl. This is a great way to use that patterned vinyl, especially um, patterns that you're not sure that you really love the most because um, I absolutely know a few people that this design is cute and they would love it. And then I just have um, a double layer that says notes on top and you could totally change those in any way that you see fit. But those are great gifts, stocking stuffers, etc. Love it. And then our third project of the night was this um, little menu board right here. And um, I'm sorry, I have it up. I just don't want to have the glare too much. So anyway, this is just adhesive vinyl and um, got it on here. Uh, this is a great scrap buster. I literally just pieced together all of these little scraps with washi um, so that I could cut it all at one time and it did great. And these are little magnetic buttons that I got in the craft section of Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree there and here and here. The next craft was these, um, they call them chalkboard tags. I call them, you know, they're just, to me, they're cardstock. But um, what I wanted to try out was the glitter iron on and the gold and silver did fantastic like these are absolutely gorgeous um, I really just kind of want to make the entire reindeer fleet and put a little Rudolph nose on those but you could do the back side with a white jelly roll pen and put the two in the from you could even just use vinyl um, to do that as well but I thought those were really cute a great way to use up your scraps um, another scrap buster so so far all of these are scrap busters this was the new to me now this is that Dollar Tree foil iron-on um, it is very thick um, and it, you know what it actually weeds a lot like infusible ink so you don't have to crack it like infusible ink but you know kind of the same um, it's very robust and thick and holds its shape and so it does a lot like infusible ink when you try and weed it. 
I probably would do this project again with foil. I don't know that I would choose the little intricate piece, uh, pieces of the design. And I'm a little sad that some of the um, foil did not get down on the, on the tag, but it's okay. It, it's still fine. And I bet you if I played around and, and, and just experimented a lot more, I probably would find something that would work as far as settings, etc. So anyway, this is great, and I could think of a lot of ways to use the foil iron-on, especially in card making. Um, I know that hot foiling is a really big thing now in the card making world, and I just do not have a hot foil machine. So this could open up a lot of possibilities there. So overall, fairly pleased with that. And then these were our Cricut Joy faux leather bookmarks. So in my previous video that I have, I did do um, faux leather bookmarks on my maker, and I did them the same way. I did one where I cut them separate and then ironed them, and then I ironed it first and then cut it. So I wanted to try the same thing with the Joy. And here's what I found out. First of all, the Joy does a great job cutting the faux leather with its, with its standard blade. And then I just used the glitter iron-on from Dollar Tree and pieced these together and used my Easy Press Mini to um, adhere them together. I used the low setting and so this worked really good, okay? And you might, if you're like me and you get slightly off, just your true control knife, you can go around the edge and you can um, take care of anything that's not quite lined up. And then this was the big experiment, same faux leather as this one, but then I took the foil and I cut out um, the same size of foil and I used my Easy Press Mini and I got these adhered together. So I pressed them first and then I put it on my strong grip mat. By the way, both of these strong grip mat face down faux leather. Okay. Um, I did have to run it twice on more pressure. So that, and then in the end, there was still like one edge where I had to use my true control knife and just kind of help it come away from the, the border. But more pressure, the Cricut Joy does a great job of helping you make faux leather bookmarks. So, and I just love this foil. This is, this is really neat. And you could even do a monogram back here if you wanted to. Um, and really, you could put a saying. Like, th there's a lot of possibilities there with that foil. So, okay, well, this was it for this evening. I hope that you found this video was informative inspiring, maybe a little bit of entertaining, <laughs> and that you were inspired to try some of these crafts on your own. Don't forget that I am linking uh, the design space file in the description, and as well as all of the materials the, that I used, I'll have those listed for you. And if this video was at all helpful and inspiring to you, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow, and we are definitely growing by leaps and bounds right now. Um, if you want and you know of some crafty friends, feel free to share this video with them as well. Um, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, that subscribe button is there, and we would love to have you on board. And don't forget that notification bell so that you know when new content is posted. It is summer. A lot of people are traveling, but I am trying to put out quite a bit of content this summer before school starts back. But anyway, till I see you again, have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Take some time out to enjoy some wonderful summer fun. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day. And as always, happy crafting.